So this is actually a case, usually 128 hertz, so the diagnosis is clear, it's a deep ulcer with osteomyelitis on the plantar surface. So we'll have the diabetic foot, how to grade it. See, there are two, three grading scales, whichever you feel better is fine, uh, unless and until it is. So they have staged it around stage three and above need to be referred to a foot clinic, but usually it is managed. It can be managed up to stage four if you are experienced enough but once it is completely unsalvageable you need to send it for amputation next is this maggot wagner classification which is uh, which is also at par so uh, grade one deep ulceration within osteomyelitis grade three four foot localized grinding extensive ganglion requiring amputation so university of texas classification so they have done it on the stage of ulcer and on the grade of ulcer so if it is epithelized food superficial or not penetrating non penetrating ischemic or infection present so these are all so usually this is used most commonly but in clinical practice up till grade two it's a good prognosis but once there is grade three the prognosis decreases down a multi so a multidisciplinary approach for foot care is required because of course, diabetes is a multidisciplinary disease. We need help of everyone in the department. And because the causes of food complications are multifactorial. So it's an integrated approach, as you can see on the screen. Uh, principles of diabetic food management, normal, of course, prevention is better than cure. And as is our uh, title of the topic, prevent developmental of risk factors, as we discussed, glycemic control, lipid control, and good foot care practices that we will discuss in detail. And uh, high risk foot, proper footwear you need to see, con and chialysis, screen for them, metabolics, you should have good sugar control, explain to the patient so that they should do it proactively and good foot care practices. Now, this is a chart foot as we saw. As we saw. And uh, this is a foot management acute, you need to immobilize, uh, reduce the strain, that is, uh, we call it as offloading. You can give uh, IV bisphosphonates, which actually reduces the uh, pain. Orthotic management with footwear and insoles, recurrent ulceration fixed. If, if a patient comes and complains you about, uh, I am having foot pain, or I have the pain aggravates when I just get up in the morning and my heel pains. So all these things, all these things might point towards the risk of ulceration. So always ask them to for two weeks to give them some insoles or some heel pads or ask them to change their shoe footwear into some cushionings uh, with have, which are having some cushioning. So actually you prevent that ulcers being happening because of any reason, whether they are diabetic or not. So that can be included in your day-to-day -day practice. Surgery is contraindicated here. So this is an ulcerated foot. You need to have offloading, podiatric surgical intervention and regular dressing and special footwear. We will see the pictures of footwear also. And ischemic, you need to get, have the general surgery consult, vascular intervention if it is required, angioplasty or bypass, whichever is uh, prudent at that point of time, debridement amputation rehab. So these are vascular intervention, which are very common as far as in the city of Bhopal, it happens very regularly, but you need to identify whether it is a peripheral arterial disease or not. And the ABI should be, uh, should be in grade of critical ischemia. But as it takes in the case of coronary circulation, the lower, role, lower limb arterial circulation also is affected in diabetes unless it is not taken care of. So I, I told you, people don't pay attention here pay attention to the heart. So you need to pay attention here as well. And that's actually stented and the, there is good build up post angioplasty. So these are the points of revascularization and post revascularization or popliteal by bypass is you see the healing is became faster healing after revascularization. So it happens. So these are again skin grafting uh, views. If you have seen in your hospitals or all, usually skins are kind of grafted from the thighs and to it. So this is actually complete fasciitis in the left hand side. If you see, few few patients take around three to four months to even five months to heal all these things. Management of infected foot, microbiological control, wound control, vascular control all these things. So, microbiological control based on severity of tissue damage and integrity and culture results however do not wait for culture so empiric antibiotics should be started these are the list of antibiotics which we use and uh, to be used 
according to the local symptom of empirical antibiotics or you can maintain few one one each of the stock and depending on the sensitivity and suitability of the patient you can give it no not limb or life threatening so you you see superficial infection shallow ulcer with purulence compliant antibiotics least stable so you can act on it very act on it aggressively and then you can do it so you could see if these uh, quite quite difficult cases and severe cases of diabetic foot osteomyelitis in the first picture you could see the bone if you do a probe test you will have a gritty sensation x rays correlate with it so these are total contact cast for offloading and removal cast which with the walker so these are usually for offloading it is an important aspect of mechanical control so only thing is even if you see such cases don't initiate don't hesitate to initiate insulin see actually insulin is a is actually a boon but it should be used it's a two edged sword so it should be used when it is required in acute stages insulin is the best is actually uh, is actually you have got something to go for when a patient presents in sepsis or in icu or in such case so don't hesitate to give insulin don't continue on oads metabolic control of course fourth hourly glucose increase in insulin dose as per the hyperglycemia maintain adequate fluid balance so this is a very uh, extensive flow chart which is being given you can go through it or take a snap of it so surgical consultation microbiological work up and on it's required a graded debridement is also required for or to just uh, prevent from amputation uh, so every day debridement or every alternate day debridement may be required with the support of antibiotics so management of a necrotic foot in neuropathic foot you can lead to necrosis usually wet surgery is indicated ischemic foot is usually dry because of occlusion so it delay till you have a vascular control unless you won't have good results necrosis is not due to microangiopathic occlusive disease so always remember the small small occlusions distally will not cause necrosis is not usually the cause that is small vessel disease the large vessel disease usually cause the necrosis because of less flow management of the necrotic foot surgical options for uh, this is operative auto amputation or larval therapy which is that done in the west but actually what happens in india is because these things are not uh, usually identified in time so automatic the maggots and the larvae develop there so sometimes what happens they actually come uh, they are actually blessing in disguise so if they are if there are the maggots are there for a localized area they actually clean up that ischemic part and after a day or so if you go there and reach so you you see uh, you you need not to debride you just need to apply some turpentine solution so that the maggots come out and then you just need to do some asepsis and just pack the wound and come out aim for tight glucose control so a psychological aspects are also there economic constraints physical psychological extremely important to offer these support as a role of clinical stuff tissue engineering these are all a few things which are done in actually primary health centers the amniotic fluid is used which is which is also a very cheap option the fresh amniotic fluid is used as as a wound healing measure footwear interventions therapeutic footwear offload the pressure soft and comfortable padded slippers uh, you have to uh, you have to advise patients or see or advise them accordingly padded socks has been shown to reduce blood pressure usually made with microcellular rubber and microcellular cotton plantar pressure distribution must be measured to design a custom footwear mid sole pressure relief plus as and when required rigid rocker bottom soles are also available extra depth flat end soles and orthoses like uh, patella tendon and bearing brace custom modeled footwear mcr and mcp as, as you can see so 10 commandments of footwear so we come to the last part of our talk which is actually the take home as in how to take the, as in how to go about the foot care so this is a detailed part do not walk barefoot inspect the feet daily for blisters wounds 
bleeding, foul smell, and increased temperature at pressure points of feet. Do not apply hot fermentation, cold compress, electric heating pads to counter the irritant ointments or strong. Use correct footwear. Choose your footwear after consulting your doctor. Always wear footwear with socks with loose elastic. Do not walk bearing weight on an affected foot in case the presence of wound or surgery. Do not sit cross legs. Do not remove footwear during the travel or place. Hot objects like silencer, cut the nails regularly, should be straight. Do not cut corns, calluses by blade and knife. Home surgery is dangerous. Clean the feet twice a day with soap and water and wipe the web spaces. This is very important. Wipe the web spaces and apply softening agent to the feet. This is a very common thing which is left ignored. If this is done, you can save a lot of the diabetic foods in elderly people. Strategies for saving the diabetes foot, the correction of vascular risk. Improve the circulation, regular foot inspection, treatment, prescribing shoes, teamwork among medical discipline, patient education. So conclusion is it's a multidisciplinary approach. Elderly diagnosis, proper evaluation, and management of diabetic foot and leading to the reduction of amputation. And ultimately, you need to manage it to reduce amputations. Thank you.